Welcome to another episode of LA Fish Guys. It's January 2011. We've kind of come to a point where we need to make a little bit of a decision. That decision kind of being hinged on the economic situation, which from what I hear is slowly improving, so with our fingers crossed, let's hope that it continues to do so. And two, I kind of come to a, a, a point as far as the business is concerned, and I'm referring to the jellyfish business. Uh, you saw that we uh, have created or are working on a prototype uh, for a new design in the other episode. And we've also got ourselves to the point where I've just admitted to myself that I'm really not a jellyfish raising guy, meaning you know, I know how to do it, uh, I've done it, I just don't consider myself that good at it. And because of that, I tend to not put as much effort into it. In fact, we've even teamed up um, with a producer of tank raised jellyfish, and they are our supplier at this time. So, what I have here are two jellyfish systems one being for moon jellyfish, the other one being for sea nettles. You may recall there was an earlier episode on setting up the sea nettle system. Well, since I've kind of two things occurred. One, the moon jellyfish polyps invaded the sea nettle system and we thought we were raising sea nettles and when in fact we were just raising more, more moon jellyfish. And two, um, these seven, eight, and nine hundred dollar a month electric bills because of the refrigeration units to keep these two large systems going just kind of become unaffordable. And so we've been trying to make a decision as to what it was we were going to do. Uh, since we're not producing the jellyfish, do we just shut down and tear down the whole system? Uh, I even bought a, uh, an electric sawzall to cut the pipes to dismantle this, because I could certainly use this space out here uh, for relieving the storage of another room inside the house. Um, but at the same time, um, there's two thoughts that went through my mind, one being you've already got the system, you've already paid for the equipment, you've already installed or set it up, it's already already running. It's like, hello, uh, what do you need? A, a big hammer in the head to tell you that get off your lazy ass and try it again? Uh, that in combination with our supplier, which produces top quality moon jellyfish, uh, I would have no problems going that direction. Uh, but the reality is, in the livestock business, uh, those environmental cues that encourage one process to move to the next process, more specifically the um, strobilation of the polyps, which is what produced the little ethyra or, or je baby jellyfish, um, this person's run into a problem. So we've been out for a couple of months now, and to a minor degree, I probably lost at least one account because I couldn't come up with um, the livestock to continue to service that tank. Uh, so they've uh, either taken the tank down or just turned it off. I don't know. I haven't heard from them. But the point is that without livestock, it kind of puts me back six years ago where I was with a tank and no source of livestock, which over the last six I learned how to produce myself, but that's a whole nother story. So I've got this system here, and I believe that what we're going to do today is try to remove as many of the polyps out of the original moon system and move all of that over into what was the original metal system, and that'll become the moon jellyfish system. So come on with us and let me show you what I got going on here. So as you can see, I've already got a number of uh, ephyra or small little tumbling type tanks here set up, as well as a little wet table to collect all the excess little polyps that I would come up with. 
And then, of course, there's the polyp tanks that are up here up top, uh, which what we ended up doing was taking turkey basters and drawing them out and then moving them down into these lower little tanks. And uh, it was that effort that spawned the uh, the P and E, the polypifera combo tank, but none of those are in the system. So anyway, there's the polyp and ephyra tanks. Uh, the wet dry filter is down there with the protein skimmer. Um, here are a couple of large 48 inch holding or tumbling tanks. Um, and then of course the refrigeration units are both outside. Uh, the lower one is the half horse and the upper one is a third horse. Uh, as you come around here there's the original prototype, there's one of the demo tanks. Over here is the uh, brine shrimp producing area. Uh, here's a couple of those P&E combo tanks here running. A uh, large hundred gallon down there. There's the fish holding systems. And of course we come over here to uh, the sea nettle system. This system has been running kind of idle, meaning it's had water continuously move through it. Uh, sea nettles typically would hold at 55 degrees and you would turn down to 45, the downward temperature being the cue for the polyps of strobile. Uh, we just let this system run idle at about 65 and only recently have we turned it down to 55, of which I can see that's um, encouraged a lot of the moon jellyfish polyps that are in the system to begin to develop uh, that long dangling polyp structure which means that the oral disc of the polyp is beginning to segment and it's those individual segments that bud off at, or strobilate uh, and become the free swimming epira. So I think what we need to do is start first by just going through and doing an overall general cleanup of the system get rid of the cobwebs, the spider webs, and get a lot of the dust out of the system as well as clean some of those tanks. So let's get to work. Hello, my name's Jim Stein. I'm with MyFishTank.com. I'd like to take and show you the advantages of a Clear for Life acrylic aquarium. Here's the first difference on a glass versus acrylic aquarium. Glass aquariums have these thick silicone seams in their corners. They use silicone to hold those glass panels together and that seam becomes pretty obvious. An acrylic tank on the other hand has a rounded front corner which means its sides plus its front panel are all one continuous sheet of acrylic and they are rounded or bent front corners. So there is no seam to be seen. Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country, or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. So these are polyps. They're hanging upside down and kind of look like a, a, a lily uh, or I think what's also called a Dutchman's pipe. Uh, it's like an upside down vase dangling downwards. All of the ones you see here are attached at the top, hanging down. You can see kind of a bulbous body and then the long slender ends are actually the tentacles of the polyp dangling downwards. Here's a number of the existing polyps in one of the chambers of the polyp tank. Those white long uh, splintery looking things are the individual polyps. And these polyps are in these top tanks here, but they've also appeared in the bottom of this uh, Ephyra tank, which is not really a good spot for them. And I think I spotted some down in this tank, which obviously has to be cleaned. And these two have to be cleaned and plumbed. 
And speaking of cleaning, that was probably my biggest downfall, so I have to really make it a point to stay on top of things this time. Um, this is the large holding reservoir that gives the tank some volume down below, and this is where the large ones will stay. And there's even some polyps, I believe, down in here. You can see some hanging right there. And so we have to make a decision what we're going to do with all of these excess polyps. Um, but first, we need to get the system clean, and then we need to move polyps from the other system over into this one. So we can ultimately shut down that other system. So be sure to come on back for part two as we do decide to make the decision to remove the polyps from the old moon jelly breeding system over to the new moon jellyfish system and see if we can get them to grow inside this tank.